Good morning, everybody. Last class of the week for this course. And then I think after, I have to look at the assignment sheet. After today, we have six more classes, right? Six more classes. So I have nothing to return to you, and I am not collecting anything today because you have all the answers to your rhythmic dictations available to you. So I trust that you kept those and you looked at those, and I don't necessarily need to put them on the screen here. Um, I can if you need to, or if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, I think we're going to go straight away into our uh, sightseeing. And I, excuse me, I'd like you to take out your sightseeing book and turn to page 88. And we'll take a look at one of the melodies on that page to warm up our voices. Anyone know if Riley is going to join us today? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen him on. I'm going to take the entire semester. So that's just why I question it. Yes. Page 88. Let's look at melody 6.7. And this is in the key of B flat. <laughs> Remember, we're doing major for a little while, and then pretty soon the melodies will go back to minor. Mm, but major for right now. Let's do let's do a scale. Yeah, let's do a scale first and then we'll do a little more picky. No. Six, eight, and six, nine. Six, eight, and six, nine. 
six eight and six nine. Now remember, uh, six eight. Whoever gets that one, you do not need to observe any of the repeats. But when you get to the end where it says DC, I'd like you to go back to the beginning and sing the first line one more time for the female. Okay. And I think six nine is just uh, standard. Uh, sing it as you see it, as it's written as. Uh, do I have any volunteers before I draw? Okay, which one would you like? Uh, I'll just do six point eight. Six point eight. Okay. All right. Take your six point nine. Then the one name I have for six nine is Hannah. Let's see. This is proof. Uh, I feel bad. Um, does anyone want to sing in for Hannah since her throat is sore? Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. I think Sydney's probably. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Okay. We'll do Sydney if Sydney doesn't mind. Sydney will do 6.9. So then we got our two, two takers. <clears throat> so 6.8 is in the key of, uh, well, what would you say, Ling? Oh, uh, it's an F sharp major. Not quite. It starts, an F, or it starts on an F sharp, and it looks like it ends on an F sharp, but that's a DC, so. What major key has five sharps? Oh, is it B? Yeah, B major. Uh huh. Absolutely. So, get B major going. sure you know where you start and that this is conducting.
volunteered and sang today, I think it was kind of a wise move because starting next class, we're going to be getting back into minor melodies. So if you find major melodies a little easier, you already got it done. Anyway, that's just my, I mean, I like minor melodies personally, so I don't mind either way. But. All right, so um, we just heard uh, Sydney do a great job with 6.9. I would like us all to sing Melody 6.9 together, and then I'm hoping that we can divide up into groups so we can do it as a piano. Okay? So, mm, I think that's the do. I don't think we need to go through a scale or anything. Let's just uh, start on me, and let's all sing 6.9 together first, and then we'll then we'll divide up. Okay, so this is conducting. Let's go one, two, and three. Me, 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 Starts out very ego 
statistical thing. Okay, one, two, three.
find me the measure in the second line that arpeggiates a five chord in A minor. Which measure of the second line has it? One of the notes of the five chord in this key, isn't it? Yeah, the first measure of the second line, yeah. You see how after the first beat, it has B, B, G sharp, G sharp, E going down. That's your five chord there uh, being arpeggiated. Again, if you want to circle that or mark that with a Roman numeral five, feel free to do so. Um, that's, again, that's kind of the focus. So, okay, I'm trying to keep dough here so I can find soul. This melody starts on soul. Soul, And for those guys that would like to sing it an octave lower, that's totally fine. I think soul looks like the lowest pitch. Very good. Can we go ahead and sight read our best 616? This is going to be hand signs. Mm, starting on soul. Looks like we come on the end of beat four. All right, here we go for our sight read for today. One, two, three, four. So do. and 615 are all in minor keys. 
So if minor keys don't come as readily or as easily to you as when you sing a major melody, please devote a little bit of extra time to these between now and, what is it, I guess next Monday. Right? We won't be meeting until next Monday. Because you never know which two names are going to be drawn, although I know which two names are not going to be drawn on Monday. But you never know. So. All right, good. Let's um, um, move off of this book for now and go to the ear training book. I'd like to tell you that we're going to uh, use a be on page, what is it? Page 161. Do you have page 161? Would be if you hear fa on the bass, 
and you hear do in the soprano, then it's going to be a four chord. But if you hear fa in the bass and you have re in the soprano, it's going to be a two chord, right? Because let, let me just write these out here. The four chord we should know is in any key is fa la do, right? But the two chord with fa in the bass, the two six, I should say is going to be fa, la, re. And so here's your difference. Now, if you hear fa on the bass, and do and or re are not in the soprano, that means they're in some of the inner voices, and those are a lot harder to hear. So I understand that it can be very tricky to sometimes distinguish between these two chords when you have fa and bass, okay? Um, let me go to the piano. Uh, just for a minute or so, and let me play um, a couple of brief chord progressions that are all well formed. In other words, they're going to go tonic, predominant, dominant, and tonic. Okay, and I'll do it in C major. So with this, this progression, I'm going to play in C major. I want you to tell me, and I'll play it a couple times if you need to, I want you to tell me if the second chord that I play is a 4 or a 2-6. 4 or 2-6. And the progression sounds like this. I'm sorry, that's not right. <laughs> like this. You have an idea already? I see a lot of people saying 4. Let me play it one more time.
Uh, I don't want to take too long. Um, because uh, harmonic dictation to this unit can be in major or minor keys, I do need to just speak a teeny little bit about this one. Um, let's do quickly a base note, Roman numeral chart for the minor mode. I'm going to abbreviate Roman numeral as RN. I've done that before. It does not stand for registered nurse or anything like that. And I always use the harmonic minor scale to get these chords. That's why I have lay, but I have T. So the Roman numerals here are going to be, guess what? No chord with Ray in the bass yet in minor keys. Because we can't, we're not supposed to use two diminished in root position. So no chord there. This would be one sixth. This would be four versus, here's our new chord right there, two diminished six. One six four, five seven, four six, five six, and one. So this is kind of how our chart for chord or the harmonies of the minor looks in the minor key. <laughs> and I'll only do a couple, uh, couple progressions in the minor mode to see if you can tell me the difference between uh, minor four and two diminished six. So again, with fa in the bass in the minor mode, uh, the whoops, I didn't want that. But the four chord is going to be fa, le, do. The two diminished six chord is going to be with fa and the bass fa, le, and re. So once again, there's a difference in chord quality, right? In minor keys, the four is minor, but the two is dissonant. It's a diminished triad. And we also have the do versus the re as a distinction between the two chords. All right. So just a couple progressions here again. Listen for the second chord. See if you can tell me if it's four or if it's two diminished six. And we're in minor now. So. Can you get it on one hearing? Now I see a lot of people saying four. You are correct. If you hear do stay in the soprano. Here's the first chord. Bass, tenor, 
Gunwin. I'm going to give you a little reminder. Remember harmonic dictations in minor keys. If you hear scale degree 7 or T, what do you have to put on that note? You have to raise it with an accidental. Trying to get my my theory one students to comprehend that because they're just starting to spell like five chords and things like that. If they're doing it in minor keys, they have to raise T with an accidental. Incidentally, I don't know if you care to know, but today I'm going to tell my theory one students I'm going to teach them about parallel fifths and octaves. They have no idea what those are. <laughs> I kind of wish you didn't know what those were. I don't know. Okay, here's the bass. So again, using 
using what you know, using your theory and your common sense, you can plug your way through these, and you can be pretty confident about what chord you have. I know it's not going to be super clear all the time, but you can make educated guesses if you don't know. And as long as your soprano note and your bass note, as long as they match or they belong or they fit into one of the same harmony, I think you're, you're on the right track. So for next class, then, you've got, uh, you've got uh, three harmonic notations, it looks like, that I assigned that will include the supertonic chord. This one in major keys, this one in minor keys. And that's where it will stop today, since I'm not